Afternoon all. I'm with my good friend Chris, Chess Explain from Chess Cube. Um, the World Championship game was today, Chris. Uh, did you 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 had a quick look at it today? Yeah, I watched uh, the live broadcast a bit uh, without any comments though. I just uh, saw the the bear moves, um, but but only quickly. So mm. I sort of um, need to look at the game as we as we go along. So yeah. I only uh, yeah looked a bit at the at the positions near the end. So yeah, let's go. So they're about my age. So I'm I'm, I'm with both of them. I'm glad that they're still you know people around forty are still able to reach the top to play for, for the World Championship, that's really cool. It's not just the youngsters just yet. The 40-year-olds still have something to say. So Yeah, yeah it won't be us to have a word there. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> so Anand playing white, played D4. Actually, Anand had a reputation of being an extremely quick, didn't he, for many years? Really, like, very, very quick as a grandmaster. Um, yeah, um, he really uh, blitzed his games uh, when he was very young, but with... Um, with the years and experience, he sort of, yeah, toned down a bit. He's always, um, he's still a pretty quick player. He mm. doesn't get into huge time scrambles, but uh, mm. it's not like he's he's blitzing his games anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so Gelfand black, playing black played knight f6. And then we saw c4, no surprise there. Yeah, first first of all, the first move by Anand actually is a pretty important thing because, um, well, he's uh, been an always an E4 player, and uh, and uh, but for the World Championship matches, somehow he uh, switched to D4 and uh, mm. yeah, played D4 against Kromnik and also against Topalov, yeah. mixing in the odd C4 and Knight F3, but basically he didn't play E4. That's a good and, point. Uh, yeah, it looks like he doesn't uh, really want to face the Petrov or, or the Nidorf for whatever reason. I I expected D4 anyway, so this wasn't a surprise to me. But what Gelfand played, uh, of course, was was a huge surprise. Oh, right, doesn't he usually play Knight F6? Um, yeah, okay, Knight F6 he might play, but uh, he never played the Grunfeld. Oh, right, never before. It's a bit of a surprise then for the match, the Grunfeld. Yeah. Um, I, I actually had my, my first 4 and C over the weekend. I managed to lose to a Groomfield in, in less than 20 moves, which I will put on YouTube at some point. But I know the Groomfield is a very dangerous weapon sometimes. And um, interestingly, um, I regret now, because we have the Groomfield with D5. So if it was Bishop G7, it, we'd go into King's Engine territory. So here Black plays D5. M maybe... This next move, CD, is is the best move. I played Bishop G5, but CD remains the best, most popular move, doesn't it? C takes D5. Yeah, it's certainly the main line mm. um, that can lead to um, yeah different sub variations. If uh, people ask me what to play against the Grünfeld, I always say uh, if you want to play for an advantage, you need to take on D5 mm. or play uh, the Russian system with Knight F3 and Queen B3. This is actually. But what I mainly recommend if people ask me because it's not so so well known maybe. Another interesting idea actually just, just to show quickly, I know you play the, the, the Samish versus, uh, versus the King's Indian, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you can go uh, on move three, you can go F three also. Oh yeah, know? Majnu, he's got a YouTube channel, he's mentioned F three. That's a very he's had had an attractive win with no, 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 on uh, on move three. On move three. Oh sorry, move three, sorry, ah. Pardon me. Knight C3, um, sorry, C4, G6. Yeah, oh, no, I see. Yeah, this is quite interesting. It sort of threatens E4 to, to get into uh, to the King's Indian Samish. And uh, yeah, Black, if he wants to play Grunfeld style, he needs to go D5, and then you can take, play E4, and he doesn't have a knight to take on C3. That's a brilliant so idea. Is... I did enjoy playing the Samish. It never really occurred to me to play F3. It's not the sort of thing that you sort of routinely, I don't know, you sometimes go a bit f to a certain move point and then start thinking. I didn't really think of F3. That's an interesting weapon. I think Maginus F3 was a little bit later, actually. I'm not sure it was yeah, that. Mm. I think this is possible, but I think then Black has got C5 on move 4. Oh. Move 4, F3, you get C5. Okay, but I think we don't want to mm. get into an opening video here. But I just want to mention, if you play the Zemish, then F3 is pretty interesting. Yeah. Black has got some, some offbeat tries against this, but uh, mm. 
Well, usually people just play their their normal setup, and then you get something different than the the standard Grunfeld. Mm. Okay, but Anand took on d5, and I think um, what he played here actually looks to me like a sort of backup variation. But let's let's mm. let's see what happens. E4, of course, and we've got to take on c3 and bishop g7. Yeah, yep. this is all very normal. And okay, now this um, this position white has got. Uh, Many options. The the sharpest move, maybe, or maybe the main move is bishop c4. Yeah. Do you remember the endless Karpov Kasparov? Um, Kasparov, no, Karpov Kasparov matches were bishop c4 and knight e2. Yeah, Karpov switched between this uh, this setup, bishop c4, and also bishop e3. Those two setups he mainly favored. Mm. But Anand now goes knight f3 and Galfand c5. Yeah, which is uh, normal. And uh, here White usually tries to fight for an advantage with um, Rook B1, right. which, is act which, act which is actually one of Gelfand's um, um, yeah, pet lines, so to say. He was a huge, um, ex or he, he still is maybe, a huge expert of this line and had many uh, great, um, great games in, um, in the past. Um, if, you, if you want to um, look at an absolutely brilliant game, Search for um, Gelfand versus Shirov. Shirov on the black side, oh. I think from 1996 or 97, and uh, with a rook sacrifice, but in a brilliant attacking game. So Gelfand actually would be on on the white side would be no surprise, but on the black side it is, yeah. <laughs> so okay, but Anand played Bishop B5 check, and this is um, the, the kind of move you usually see in uh, in games where white, to be honest, just plays for a draw. Ah. Because it's a uh, it's it's a very drawish line, and uh, it's quite surprising that he is coming up with this. Maybe this is just speculation, of course, but uh, um, maybe the team uh, beforehand uh, just said, "Okay, if Gelfand comes up with the surprise and plays a Grunfeld, then we play some sort of safe line in the first game, and if he does it again, then we have sort of got something prepared for this." Mm. This is often. Um, a policy I think they they come up with because it's um yeah it's a pretty practical decision it it wasn't very likely that he plays a Grunfeld, but you need to have some idea what to do blimey so, so yeah. it's, it's the equivalent of the exchange French against the Grunfeld, trying to get rid of the dynamism or something. yeah not it's not that bad no it's but, not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well yeah actually on knight c6 here um, which Garfan played I think this is uh, the most um, principal move, Anand came up with d5, which is, of course, um, a bit sharper. Mm. What, so what's but, going on here with the exchange act? Should we have a quick look then? Bishop takes c3, yeah, it should, of course. bishop yeah, d2. It, it looks like white gets uh, the material back pretty much instantly because the rook ha hangs now. There's no, there's no, there's no qu question that you just take here. That's yeah. a disaster. So if you yeah, castle then, um, is it Bishop h6 or and Bishop h6, um, maybe knight d4, but you can just take on c6 with the pawn. Right. And you've got two pieces, and uh, you've got Bishop h6 coming also. This looks like a yeah winning position. A winning position. A, a winning position. Um, yeah. What else? Yes. <laughs> sorry, you've got two pieces for. Of course, you've got two pieces. Why is yeah, zero up here? <laughs> yeah, I've had two two bishop bishop h six is coming. I don't see a move really. What what do you play now? F six, because of bishop bishop h six was the threat, and then whatever you can play whatever. It's just mm. just close to winning. Yeah. Okay, that's that's to be avoided then. <laughs> yeah, that's that's keeping that pin on and all sorts. Yeah. So so what was played was actually queen a five. Yeah. This. Uh, yeah, brings up the counter threat on the b b five bishop. Yeah, and um, yeah, and also c three is now hanging with, yeah, with a huge check now <laughs> with the queen check winning the rook. So mm. white maybe uh, must play rook b one. I'm not sure if he's got something else. Um, he doesn't want to do anything else like bishop c six. That's a bit poxy, isn't it, to play bishop takes c six? That doesn't that, yeah. that wouldn't get anything to do this, would it? Just, yeah, I think if you if you look at the game, rook b1, black plays a6, and I think he needs to maybe. Mm. So you basically gain a tempo with rook b1. Black is still in this pin, so he cannot really uh, oh, do yes. anything. 
but but play a six, I think. Otherwise, you just take the knight. Mm. You so, should be, on on c three, just bishop d two. Yes, and, of course. And then then you'd be winning the c six knight. So a six virtually looks forced. Yeah, so it it wins the tempo with b one. Of course, it leaves a two uh, hanging, but it's an half open file or an open file even. Yeah. Okay. Now I think White needs to take. I would say. Um, he can't. If he retreated the bishop, then yeah, you know, the check looks pretty pretty uh, dangerous now. Maybe with the bishop, um, he can't retreat this bishop. There's no way. He just take the bishop. Yeah, you can take with the bishop and then play knight d4 even. I yeah, think. yeah. You get that square, that d4 square after that winning that. Point. Yeah, it's 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 pretty forced. Um, mm. I, I guess. So now white leaves two pawns hanging by just castling, but of course black hasn't castled yet, um, can't be too greedy. But he is a little bit, bit of a computer-like move, for, uh, winning the a2 pawn, but why not? Um, he won the a2 pawn here. Um, do you think that's the best move? Queen takes a2. Yeah, well, I, did, I didn't do any analysis, so it's most likely that Gelfand uh, <laughs> had a much deeper look at this than uh, than I do now, but mm. well, it's 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 at least it's a principled move. Mm. If you get the a pawn, yeah, the past a pawn. You've generated the past a pawn, but there is this yeah. question about this. I think I I picked into the, there was an official stream commentary of Nigel Short actually today, and he was talking yeah. about this pawn maybe being a bit dangerous, and he likes white because. White's bishop could sometimes come out and maybe support this pawn. It could be dangerous. Yeah. And it could revolve around this pawn on c6. Um, but um, there's okay. Let's, so should we go with the game? Queen takes a2. Um, which okay attacks the rook and also putting pressure on d5. Um, so White responded now with rook b2 gaining a tempo. And the queen. Yeah, this is this is technically. A novelty. <laughs> I I was looking it up quickly because uh, I just wanted to know mm. how far we've been on um, yeah treaded ground here. Um, mm. So uh, there was a game, some amateur game actually, uh, with bishop e3 instead of rook b2. But I'm not sure. If maybe Arnold already um, was was playing on its own here. Mm. Um, but um, hard to hard to say offhand. Um, What's what's better here? I think if you consider what he what he played in the game, he just went for a completely different kind of plan, which uh, mm. actually is is the one that I also thought of when I when I saw this position. I saw this position, mm. and I thought White's idea wouldn't be to take on c6, but to play d6. What what he actually did, but yeah, that looks uh, more effective. If you take on c6 here, uh, what would be an adequate move for Black? Um, do you think? Um, although this pawn looks as though it might be dangerous, Black's got the target c3. Can Black just castle or? Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe taking on c3 is too greedy, most yeah. likely. Yeah. <laughs> you always need to consider this mm. if you if Black can grab c3. Mm. But instead, yeah, he he played a move which. Um, which forces Black to play an awkward-looking but resourceful move. Now he plays d6, so it looks as though Black can't castle because of d takes e7. Now, um, or no, d just d7 actually. Just d7 would win the bishop, wouldn't it? D7 wins the yeah, bishop. Yeah, this this wins material because there's no there's no pin on the queen because because you, you're actually gonna you're actually yeah, gonna pin the rook here, so you can't. Yeah, you can just take them. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no escape for the bishop, so so that actually d7. Um, yeah. So no I think, castling. I think what he what he played maybe is the only move. C could be. Well, there's also e d maybe to consider break. No, that that's giving the queen in attacking c six. Yeah. So he plays rook a seven. Yeah. Rook a seven. Okay, it stops yeah. d seven. Yeah, this looks a, a bit awkward, of course. But first idea would be like rook b eight here, pinning the the bishop. Yeah. But, uh, so maybe black can just castle. Sorry, maybe. pardon me, castle. And now, this isn't that dangerous, is it? Because um, d7 you can just uh, take now, um, I assume. Yeah, the funny rook on a7 is doing a good job here. Yeah. Um, d takes e, you could just maybe just take. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not obvious how white should continue. Mm. You always have to keep in mind after d6, white needs to get something um, yeah pretty concrete going. Here's a he's a pawn down, mm. and black's got two bishops. So if you um, don't get anything real here, um, it can get ugly quickly. Also with the a pawn. Mm. So um, bishop g5. What he played makes a lot of sense, I think. Black maybe needs to take now on d6. Yes. Not sure if he's got some alternative. And then the the game continuation um, looks pretty logical. So queen takes d6. And now the queen is encouraged to take that c6 pawn with this next move, rook d7. So the yeah, this is, this is interesting now. Just, just quickly, um, does black have any alternative? The only only checking quickly here. So move like I don't know, maybe I'm blundering here. <laughs> Queen C seven now you can just take C five, yeah, okay. Queen C seven let's have a quick look to show Queen takes C five, yeah, and it's still stopping black from casting. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, and it's no 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 obvious way um to to enable castling, so okay, this is this is awful. Okay. So um he just returned the pawn and it's only double pawns anyway. They're a bit miserable in any case. Yeah, yeah. They're not, not worth much. Also, this bishop could be liberated now on this diagonal. As soon as that pawn is removed, there could be pot potentially use on that diagonal, but I don't think that happens in the game. But the pawn on c6 is taken now. And, and now we see a humble retreat with queen c7. But black has the two bishops here, so why not? He's got the past a pawn, which I think uh, Nigel Short had commented could be dangerous in the end game, but we don't see this uh, pawn. Um, well, sorry, that means give the game away. That pawn, un unfortunately, doesn't turn out to be a major hero, even though it's a past pawn here, and black's got the bishop pair. Doesn't it look as though black's done very, very well here in this game, actually, to get this position? It looks as though he's solved most of the concerns. Yeah, if, if white. As I said, doesn't uh, get anything concrete here, or yeah, well, the the only compensation uh, for the for the bishop pair here is that um, well, white has uh, two pawn islands, uh, those four four and one, and black has got three, so yeah. it's got a slightly weaker pawn structure. Yeah. And I think um, in the game continuation, it it pretty much um, gets exchanged down to to almost nothing. <laughs> So um, if you go step by step here, I think it doesn't make any sense for white to avoid the queen trade here. Move like queen a4 just doesn't um, amount to much. Black could just castle, I suppose, castle. Yeah, you can castle, but maybe you can also take c3. Um, I'm a greedy person. What can I do? <laughs> yeah, it, it, you, you need to, yeah. once this pawn is gone, but what does white do? Yeah, you're right. There's time to take it. I think you can just return back. Maybe. It, it, maybe. Rook c2. It could be a problem. c5 could be a problem. Then, I don't know, rook c1 or something. Like pressure on c5 and then c8. Maybe taking is too greedy. I'm not sure. <laughs> mm. But. Um, Mind you, there's a back row issue here. So black could castle. Isn't there a back row issue with. Yeah, oh no, no, there isn't. Sorry, hang on. The queen's on. Yeah. The queen's on d1. Forget that. <laughs> okay, no. Yeah, but but still, this this line makes sense. Castles rook c5, um, rook c5, and queen b7 or whatever. Oh, you need to, or b8. Queen, no, queen b8. You can play rook c8. Yeah. Oh, rook c8. Yeah, that's a good tactic there, because actually after rook c8, that bishop's protecting c1 anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this could rebound. Your materialism could be punished there if you take on c3. Oh, no, yeah, but queen b7. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't clear. It, it looked uh, looked okay. But okay, black can also castle instead of taking the c3 pawn. Yeah. Would stay weakness. So if you castle, white needs to uh, think uh, what about about uh, he's going to do with this pawn. Mm. And um, hmm. Yeah, queen a4. I think is pointless. So at this point, I think white um, will ju just wants to exchange queens and trade this off to a draw. Yeah, it's very hard to uh, to imagine uh, how you could uh, play for win here. Yeah, so he did that. He, the queens came off. 
to the disappointment of the spectators expecting a fantastic <laughs> attacking game. No, 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 they weren't. I'm sure they weren't. <laughs> so bishop f4 um, now to attack that rook. And um, okay, so the rook actually just challenged this b rook, which looks fairly logical. And uh, Anand refused the exchange. If he does take here, then he's putting that bishop on a nice diagonal. Yeah, yeah and then you've got two pawns hanging, c3 and d4. <laughs> yeah, that's not very pleasant. The the, yeah. the glaze of the bishop the, is 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 look at the bishops look quite dangerous here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. But this also shows that black um, doesn't have any problems if white needs to play a very unrook like move. Uh, rook c2. Rook c2 is not a move you want to. <laughs> You want to play really? There's no, there's no rook b1 here. You just take because the bishop's protecting here. You can just move the king off the check, so yeah. that's not a problem. Um, so yeah, um, so he plays. He plays rook c2, which doesn't look like an amazingly aggressive position for white now. Um, the Groomfield bishop looks nice. Um, so so here, um, black finally castled. And um, so white, though, with, with castling, there is this fork, basically, with, with the bishop, which is yeah. bishop d6. Okay, so... I think the, on, the only question here um, for the remaining, I think we've got only three moves remaining in the game. <laughs> the only question is, but I think we won't solve it now by just uh, quickly looking at it. If um, black had some opportunity here to... Uh, to get get out more of this, but um, I think also from a match uh, strategy point of view, I think he was quite content um, with an easy draw. Mm. So yeah, with black, uh, you can try try and get the advantage with white. Usually, That's yeah, it, it's it's always nice. I think to uh, to have a problem free um, um, black draw, mm. and if he, of course if if Gaffand would have seen something really really great, he would have gone for it, but. Um, but um, I'm not sure if there is something. But uh, this looks logical to counterattack this pawn anyway, and so that okay. actually makes White avoid taking here. He actually defends his e4 pawn here instead of taking on c5. Um, so yep. he plays knight d2. So I suppose taking on c5 might be asking for trouble, given he didn't yeah. play. It. I assume yeah. it's asking for trouble. Well, yeah, this this looks uh, like it. Like something black would uh, would play on this wouldn't he wouldn't uh, wouldn't draw I think because he's knocking out a center pawn here is that the important thing to knock out a center pawn and have that past a pawn yeah you exchanged a potentially protected pawn on e4 e4 can always be protected by f3 so white white's got those two eye pawn islands and now black has got ridden uh, black's weakness on c5 which is the only real weakness is now gone yeah. For potentially a protected pawn on e4, so this is just pure bishop pair with, with the uh, the past a pawn. Yeah, and um, this is this is tough. Yeah, so instead, Anand plays another defensive move, but it's important to maintain that center pawn. Knight d2, and he here more pressure was put on the e4 pawn with f5 with the help of that bishop, which he's got, which White hasn't got the counterpart. Bishop f5, so um, it's White doesn't want to take on f5. That just liberates the bishop and again solves lots of problems. Yeah. Isn't it? And that's that's horrendous um, for the similar reasons. In fact, Black could then maybe even this play c4 later. <laughs> uh, sorry, not yeah, c. This just fails um, tactically. I think rook c1, rook d7. We've got uh, issues here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not an option. Okay, so f3. Um, it doesn't yeah, want to play need, e5 either. Virtually forced. And now uh, black continues. Yeah. f takes e4. And white doesn't want the isolated pawn, so he plays knight takes e4. Why not have a nice knight there? And, um, and here black, but it does run into this pin, bishop f5. Uh, and here, um, they agreed a draw. So, could White have played on? White's happy. They're, they're both happy with a draw here. Um, yeah, I think it's. Um, oh, well, well, I don't see how see how White could have played on, mm -hmm. but um, I'm not quite sure what is the the real drawing line here now. 
maybe rook a2 or something, trying to exchange c3 for c4 a6 or something. Just just the first idea that came to mind, but... Uh, you might exchange your prisoners. Yeah. Nimzovich talks about sides exchanging weaknesses off. <laughs> exchange your prisoners. It was this, in, in my system, this term. Yeah. <laughs> Um, rook yeah, like, like we play something like uh, takes on e4, takes on c3, and it's, it's just uh, it's just it's just nothing left, yeah. Yeah, if we take on c5 here, otherwise there might be bishop d4 check, and then take on e4. There's no mate running rook f8. <laughs> that's that's yeah. there's not much. Um... Yeah, this is this is really a complete draw. So I, I don't think um, you can can <clears throat> sorry. Mm. Um, blame the players in any way to um, mm. to have agreed a premature draw or something. Sometimes you really ask yourself why 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 don't they play on? It's an interesting position, but mm. maybe this just gets um, traded down. You know, the c pawn is also pretty much gone, so mm. black needs to uh, black c pawn. I mean, so black needs to um, get something in return. So the weaknesses maybe exchange uh, exchange off here completely. Mm. It looked it, it looked like a pretty logical draw to me, but um, mm. just by by quickly um, quickly looking at the game. Yeah, should we do a quick overview and summary then? Um, just quick. Yeah, if, it, it will be if it will be very interesting. Um, what uh, what will happen in uh, game three? Of course, what what Arnand will play if he continues to play d4 and uh, Gerfand really um, plays the Grunfeld in more than one game. Well, you know. One thing which is um, different uh, from World Championship matches, for instance, in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, is that it's just 12, 12 games. This is um, yeah, it's very ridiculous. short, isn't it? Very short match. It is pretty pretty short, and this also means um, you need to consider that um, people just have six black games to defend. So you could actually make up some sort of strategy that you play, let's say three defenses and each one you only play twice or you play four different defenses you could pretty much avoid lots of preparation you're being a moving target <laughs> you do this in a in a 24 game match or a 30 game match or whatever there if you look at this um, match of in 84 of cup of Kasparov this was all queen's gambit all the time yeah yeah, and but what what can you do? They played uh, 48 games, and you're sort of out of. <laughs> you cannot uh, switch around all the time and surprise. Mm. So, but uh, in the short match, maybe it's possible. It's possible that Gelfand only will play the Grunfeld once or twice, mm. and return to his usual openings um, in game three. But Anat now needs to, um, or the team, needs to spend uh, two or three days now for the before the next white game. To um, yeah, to have something against the Grunfeld, he cannot play this line again. So yeah, well, let's quickly, just uh, quickly, just briefly whiz for yeah. it again. So it was a main line Grunfeld uh, with with Knight F3, maybe a little bit of a surprising move, but you, as you say, get maybe geared up for a draw uh, with this Bishop B5 check and this D5. It's a forcing continuation, really, um, out of the opening, isn't it? It's quite a forcing line. Um, yeah, I think, but I think the, the the draw line actually isn't d5, but I think bishop e3 three, three or something. I remember some some game um, where we actually Kramnik played the Grunfeld to surprise his opponent, and he played this line and pretty much exchanged off the whole board. But <laughs> well, okay, but this, this it didn't happen in the game. Mm. This was actually it wasn't it wasn't um, completely unambitious by White. Mm. Um, he sacrificed a pawn and tried this d6. Yeah. Think, uh, let's let's go go to it. So this d6, it starts to look a bit scary after d6. Um, I remember the time thinking, this, yeah, this is scary. But this resourceful rook a7 seems totally appropriate for the position. Then. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I think Gerfand is used to stuff like this in the night off, grabbing some pawn on the side and then making <laughs> strange rook moves to keep the position together. Well, there's a famous uh, Fisher Tau where Tau. Was it, or was it someone else played rook a7? It was yeah, the idea of rook a7. I've seen in Sicilians anyway. So uh, that's interesting. Bishop g5. Okay, so then we saw the queen invited in to munch one of the double pawns. Then the queens came off, and then we have a kind of um, situation where both sides have these weaknesses that are picked on, 
and uh, and and then you know he's played you know a couple of you know seemingly passive moves to defend his pawns, but that was necessary to and and here they um, agree to draw. Okay, so maybe maybe there'll be a lot more excitement tomorrow. Who knows? It'll be a brilliant attacking game or something tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, of course it will be interesting to see uh, what Gelfand uh, comes up with um, as wide. I think. What what what's remarkable um, is uh, really that that you played the Grunfeld. It's quite remarkable, and shows that um, yeah he's willing to to step out of his uh, comfort zone to really uh, have a shot at this title. Hmm. He, he could have could have played the Queen's Gambit or some rather um, stodgy opening that he usually plays against d4. He plays uh, Queen's Gambit declined and. Those kind of things, but um, well, he's he's come up with a, with a surprise, and uh, and this this match won't be um, an easy an easy run for for Arnold, I think unless he he scores a quick win now, let's say with White in game two, and I don't think Gelfand could could return from uh, from being down, but uh, if he can keep the match open a couple of games, let's say three or four draws, and I'm not sure, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, um, all right. I hope everyone on YouTube um, has got something from this commentary. Thanks, Chris. Uh, okay, so we'll upload this to our respective channels. Um, so King's Crusher and Chess Explain channels um, should be there soon. Okay, um, all right. Hope uh, some, some exciting games to come. Thanks yeah. very much. Yeah, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, talk to you soon. I think uh, for, for game two we'll do something similar. Yeah? Excellent. Okay. Thanks very much.